So welcome to Women Matters again. Today is the 12th of October. And after having done three episodes on the shadow, we want to talk about how our memories are conditioning us and maybe where do they, did they lead to shadow? Do we have shadow memories? <laughs> and which are the, the golden shadow memories? We will see how we can connect that. Yeah, I'm Heidi from thewisdomfactory.net, being in Italy and starting to get cold because it's beginning to be autumn. And I give over to the very cold place, which seems to be in Vienna, where Monia is. <laughs> well, it's cold here too. And I have just changed the boots and the shoes and the hats and the and the weather is miserable and it's probably continuing like this so i am hoping i will be warmed here and yeah and maybe i can remember something i pass on to hanili hello everyone my name is hanili i'm from south africa on my way to migrate to europe um, and here we have in between weather it's very interesting we would have a drop in of 10 degrees in like a day and then up again 10 degrees. So today, the last few days was very wet and cold, very unlike our summer rains when it's hot usually. So we're in the in-between state currently. I think that says a lot about myself too. So <laughs> like in between here and Europe. So I'm here, thank you. I'm looking forward to the memory part. And I give over to Gertrude. Hi, I'm living in the middle of Germany <laughs> and um, <laughs> it, it's really getting cold, but the coming from warm to cold is not so easy as vice versa. So <laughs> it's not the temperature itself, but the adjustment. And I just uh, took my tortoise out of the balcony so I made them autumn <laughs> fresh <laughs> yeah. so the, yeah the nights are too cold and we'll see what comes up <laughs> we have to interrupt the breakfast in San Diego and invite <laughs> Beatrice and Victoria hello sorry the lighting is, is yeah. we're backlit at the moment there we go oh, oh. good 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 um, I just had to put my face very close to the camera. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in San Diego. It is um, currently comfortable, but it's going to get hot again. We're going to have another spike, I think, in the 90s. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not looking forward to that. I'm missing the beautiful fall weather in New York. Um, I guess I brought this topic up um, <laughs> because we've been doing a lot of excavating of my grandmother's properties and the many uh, generations of estates that she collected. And then also, uh, you know, here that I'm visiting at home, I decided I wanted to um, clean up my childhood room and tr turn it into a room that's appropriate for my age because everything was kind of left there from my high school and middle school time. So, um, so there's been a lot of memories and uh, feelings coming up as we sort through various objects and photos and locations. So um, I'm very interested in hearing how that resonates with other people. Um, I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm having a very difficult time now because every night seems to be the processing time for my entire past. And since I'm getting older, by the minute, my past is getting longer. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, my nights are, are, I wake up more exhausted than I go to bed. So it's, um, it's a difficult time right now. The, the seeing all of these, um, material things that um, go back in my case to 
before my own grandparents. So that go back a hundred years. Um, it's, it's fascinating, but it's also kind of a torment because I don't know what to do with, not only with the objects themselves, even if they're just letters and papers, but I also don't know what to do with the, the memories or the, or, you know, hearing about these relatives and then my grandparents and my great aunts, and it's a whole colony of people. So rather than just grieving for my mother, which is what I'm still doing very powerfully, um, now all of a sudden I have this whole panoply of people <laughs> that I'm thinking about. And a lot of the memories are really beautiful and happy, but, um, but it just, I feel it's very heavy to carry this weight. And, and then the fact that there are material objects to go along with it is material weight. So I don't know what to do with all of this. Why are you looking at me? That's, that's the, okay. the conclusion of our check-in for the moment. <laughs> Yeah. The memories of our ancestors. Thinking about our own lives. <laughs> Will we leave these memories to others or in what way that they are a weight or, you know, are we happy with nobody rem remembering us? So I think these are really questions because some people write books or are in some way famous and so, so they will last but and then when you have find letters like uh, victoria maybe it's uh, important if you find letters and you are an important person or that was an important person you can construct a whole lot of things out of that and in many cases uh, when you find the letter from chakal as we saw the picture at the beginning would be perfect no everybody would be happy to find something but it if it's mm -hmm. person, yeah exactly if it is a person x y z what do we do with their legacy with their own memories or all the the diaries we are writing now no what will be with them so I first I have an idea to ask you how is it for you when you had to clean up your house and throw away things which you know are from people or either you know or you don't know but they were somehow you don't want to throw the things away how is it for you i've just been through that a few times with my mom and it's very interesting how, as time goes on, the first time we really had to do that for my mom was when she moved from the countryside to the city into a retirement village. And then from there into an old age home. And now that she's passed, to go through her pictures was very interesting. Because I we discovered her whole um, array of beautiful pictures of her own journeys, and for her memorial, my brother put together a beautiful video that we used as part of the of the process, which was most beautiful. But it was very interesting how I responded to this, and my sister recently, just ten days ago, went down to the old family farm to share her ashes there with the land, which is most beautiful. But when I saw the pictures, I was crying like a baby, not because of grief for my mother. It was sort of grief for the land. It was very interesting in my own memories as a child. But what was most beautiful out of the experience was between my siblings and I, the conversations we had in the WhatsApp group. As this was happening and my sister was sending us pictures because it's quite far from here <clears throat> and it was raining and it's it's semi-desert area so it was so beautiful that it was raining there when she was doing this because my mom would have loved that so that memory of stepping into my mom's shoes of seeing this kind that's part of the country in all green and luscious while whilst when she was growing up it was quite the opposite it was just beautiful 
there's a re reconnection part for me personally to it all and to see her life through her own eyes through her pictures and when she passed we immediately shared all her clothes and personal belongings that she still had with people who could use it so we went through it a few times and I still have all her pictures here and I'm wondering, I have been wondering what to do with it because originally I wanted to create one big massive movie out of it and then share it with all the family. But it also, in sharing some of the pictures with some of my cousins, for example, it created memories for them of their, of their past. So it was like this interwoven web of memories and to also make the distinction it's not my memories necessarily and my own ones it's very interesting we, we we remember all the beautiful times with my mom and especially on the farm as young kids and in the mountains and as i'm sitting here i'm feeling it in my body again as a collective thing not necessarily as a weight but it's because we have gone through this process i truly feel that it's because we've gone through this process with her physical objects so many times and also discovering letters of uh, after my dad died how men reached out to her and she rejected them and, um, so it's very interesting to understand why she behaved in a certain way but in have some kind of, it's not only having compassion because there was so much humor in it as well so um, I myself have been a nomad for the last eight years so I don't have much physical things that belongs to me and I've myself has recently gone through this process of making it less and less what I have because I'm going to relocate but not only because of that I didn't want to carry all this stuff like even my workshop materials I digitalized it that I don't have the physical weight because I love paper but I don't have the physical weight of carrying lots of journals or paper and the likes and books. So I think it's a very personal thing for me on, it's a feeling thing rather than a physical sensory thing. I don't know how to explain it. I'm confused. For me, that has different layers. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, going through stuff with my siblings to when my parents passed or my mom had to go through the nursing, uh, to the nursing home. So, um, yeah. I, <laughs> There, there is a painting that that is in our house, so I, I wanted to have that. And my daughter has already said, but I want to have that. So, um, so it's kind of funny <laughs> to, <laughs> to talk about that. And um, I realized, especially with COVID, um, yeah, there are people dying just out of the middle of, of life. And it's not just really old and sick people, <laughs> more than more that, but uh, still it's, it's like, okay, could be over any time. And, and that made me think, what do I want to leave behind? And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, very bad in throwing away things so so we're kind of <laughs> yeah and we want to buy a house and move and so i i really promised myself to to get out everything that is not needed and that i will not pass on and 
that's just for whatever reason. So, yeah. And there are some things that I want to keep and that I kept from my parents, like pictures. Yeah. They were not so, they had seven kids, so <laughs> they were not so letter writers. But uh, yeah, there's some. So when I think back, there are more not so pleasant things I remember when I'm just doing it by myself. But when I'm looking at the pictures, there are some nice events that I can remember then. So I really don't want to pass on chunks that they have to go through just for like, yeah, I want to have this and you want to have this. So yeah, that's my, yeah, and I can go after another time. Well, uh, this summer our cellar was flooded unexpectedly <laughs> and we had to go through a lot of wet papers and we hung them up on the balcony. All our passports, I didn't remember we had so many passports when we were still in the diplomatic service. And of course letters my husband wrote to me when I was still in Vienna, pregnant, and he was already in the States. And the children were excited, of, they wanted them, all of them, so that's just, it was very nice. Um, to me, it was really something that was past. It, it has no, I'm in a different life cycle now. It's a sort of, I couldn't really relate to it, to all these passports and I remembered vaguely but it wasn't really that impressive impressive anymore on the other hand I have been writing diaries intimate diaries for decades now they are all stacked up here in boxes and I wonder if I leave them to my children maybe they will recognize that they didn't know me at all so it's kind of a vengeance maybe that I just leave them there and they can do with it what they want, but they see me differently, a lot differently. They see me as yeah, an old woman and loving their dog, but yeah. On the other hand, uh, when my mother died, we got many photograph albums, still about the war my father was in Second World War II and they are still there also on the shelves and I can't get myself to throw them away because this is the lifetime of my parents and it definitely influences me still the war and everything being parted from your from your husband and not knowing if he's still alive or not so that's something I absorbed in the uterus when my mother was pregnant in 1941 and uh, I have been working on that and it was quite helpful but that came quite un an unexpected memory when I looked at all these photographs from the war but they explained a lot and yeah I wonder if, because the title, uh, you, you suggested how our memories are conditioning us. Hmm. Being, it's a shadow, that's a shadow topic, I guess. The conditioning being uh, prey to your emotions when you don't have contact to a loved one. Uh, that's definitely going back to that time. And that's more than half of a century ago. So, I wonder if I should leave this to my children or half a, <laughs> half a century of diaries. Uh, 
maybe I just maybe I will make a compress it into two pages and tell them all my diaries are about these subjects and if they are not your topic then just forget it <laughs> maybe maybe I'm not sure about that it just came to me now what okay. about writing a book Monia yeah I hate happen. writing a book it's so much work <laughs> So I'm lazy. Have, I'm absolutely, absolutely lazy. Have, have, you, have that read to somebody? They can make a doctorate about it. <laughs> Monia, after life, after, you know, after the war, something, and make them write the book about it. Or a romance or something. There are so many books written all the time, every day. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the suggestion. Very kind. Of you. I will be your guest writer, Monia. Huh? I'll be your guest writer. Oh, my ghost writer. <laughs> Are you ghost writer? Ah, then you have to read all my. <laughs> it's always about the same thing because it takes a long time to really change. And now I'm really glad that I finally, in my seventh decennium, I, I finally got around to shedding some of these yeah, chains. It's, it's probably it's chains that keep you back. Maybe I just write about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll go give back to Heidi. Okay, so I will say something. For me, there are two things which I'm noticing. My mother, we had a big garden where we, fortunately, as kin, uh, children, we could grow up there. And she, when I was about 14, needed to sell the garden because she worked so much in, in it so that she got a heart condition. And the garden seemed to have helped them to survive uh, the, um, the war. But... When I later asked her, why did you do the, all this work in the garden all the time, you know, that you always had to, you know, very hard work. And she said, my father had constructed this garden with pathways, you know, and everything. And she felt in duty to maintain that. And I thought, oh, Okay, you know, so I'm noticing also with me in some ways the same thing because when my mother died, we divided the things between us five children. There was no problem at all. And I took away much of the, um, how do you say, plates and stuff, you know, the uh, so nice mocha cups and stuff. And now they are here. And I still keep them. And I, I thought, what do I do with them now? Because I, I have decided to, to want to, to, to get rid of much, many things, also musical uh, um, notes, you know, because whoever knows if I ever use them again, probably not. And I have nobody to clean out the house when I die. So they for sure would throw everything away in the bin. And I, I don't like that idea. So I would love to find people who, who need the things which I have or who enjoy the things, all these little cups, you know, and the other things uh, also. Uh, yeah. So I noticed that I also keep these things because they were sacred to my, to belong to my mother. Probably they were sacred because she, she took care for normal days. There were other plates, you know, and these were for, for birthdays and whatever. <sighs> yeah, I keep them, but what for? I never used them. So is this a shadow? For sure it's a pattern. And it doesn't seem to be so... It doesn't make life easier, let's say in this way. So <laughs> I'm wondering, Beatrice, how it is for you. You are so much younger and <laughs> your memories are short term, more short term than ours. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't, I can't say I, I, I don't know what it'll be like when I am all of your ages. Um, it feels like there's already so much. <laughs> At, at my my young age, um, I think also because we 
we we moved around so much and so i feel like i have all these different chapters of my life that took place in different places and that i was a very different person in um you know my childhood in europe was a very different experience than the two years in japan which is very different from um the year or two that we lived with my grandmother when we first moved here and then when we bought this house and then when i went to santa barbara for college it's like another chapter and then when i uh i moved all that stuff back again and then i moved back to santa barbara to live there to have a professional career for four years and that's a different chapter and now i'm in new york new chapter <laughs> so i feel like it's even in my own life i feel like i've accumulated and i inherited the the bug from my mother and my grandmother and probably generations before of saving everything <coughs> and not just important things. I mean, we save, you know, jars and Tupperwares and containers that could be useful, you know, for a picnic that we never go on. Um, or, you know, um, there's just a lot, there's a lot of saving. If anything could be useful at any time in the future, it gets saved. Um, so I'm the same way. I save everything. Even in New York, I, I can't believe how much I've accumulated in my small apartment. You know, I moved there with five suitcases, but I don't think I could move out with five suitcases. Um, and I've only been there two years. Um, so I, it's a little scary to think about what it's gonna feel like as I get older, <laughs> if I continue this habit. Um, and um, yeah, but the shadow side for me, I mean, so I think the reason, one of the reasons I'm thinking about this a lot is, is uh, on Friday, we went to one of my grandmother's houses. Um, that was the one that I, we lived in when we first moved here. And there's a lot of things that we never picked up, a lot of things that we left there from that time. And um, and my grandmother, I don't know, I'm just, I can't seem to shake it. When I was about eight or nine years old, um, well, every step, so here in the US, the, the, I don't know about if they do this in Europe, but all the churches have what they call vacation Bible school in the summer. And it's like a week long, thematic um, kids camp kind of thing, day camp, basically. Um, and I loved vacation Bible schools and I would go to every single, I, we found all of the churches in the area and, and they all had a, a different weeks and I would just binge <laughs> vacation Bible schools as a child, go from church to church to church. Anyway, I loved it. And so my, my grandmother knew this about me and she decided that she wanted to build her own vacation Bible school for me called Tools of Living. And she built this whole little curriculum. She wanted to teach me how to sew. She wanted me to uh, work on her felt set. She had this beautiful, huge felt set. We were gonna learn how to cook. I was gonna learn how to balance the checkbook. Um, I think there were probably more ideas. Music. Uh, music. Um, anyway, all of the things that she thought were essential tools for living and she built a whole little curriculum and she sorted all the stuff in little bags and made a welcome sign all the and I never did it I think I start I think we did maybe half a day once but I was always I don't know busy or uninterested or something I never did it and she did all this preparation and on Friday we opened up one of these, these storage units on her property and lo and behold, the entire curriculum of tools for living was there in boxes. And I don't know, I just felt like a horrible, horrible granddaughter and a horrible selfish person. And why, why couldn't I carve out, you know, five days for her to do this project? Um, I don't know. So that's like, that's a big shadow, right? I think there's a lot of memory. There's a lot of beautiful memories and happy memories and things that I, when I look at the photos of the objects or whatever, um, you know, it's wonderful to see photos of my father times when I was in elementary school or find an old childhood toy or treasure. You know, there's a, there's a lot of really wonderful things, but there's also that, that was like a major moment of guilt for me. Um, and I don't know what to do with that. I mean, I, I'm saving, you know, we, we've been indicating what things we want to keep and what things um, they can sell or get rid of. And I kept all of it. 
I said I want to keep all of it. It's down there still on the property, but you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with the tools of living curriculum that I don't know what she was going to do with? And I don't know. I hope I have children one day, but I don't know if I will. And I don't know how to sew. <laughs> and I didn't learn how to balance a checkbook and I didn't get the tools of living. So how do I even pass it on? Um, anyway, sorry, I'm talking a lot, but that's, yeah, that's a, a strange feeling. You want to talk? Oh, uh, yeah, that's very heavy. Um, I'm not only lazy like Monia says she is, but I'm also, um, I want to, I, I've always wanted to be a spirit and not a body. So material things have always weighed me down. Um, even when I was a child, I, I wanted, um, I dreamed of a simple life because of course, growing up in a house where my mother accumulated everything. And in her case, um, you know, it's because she was born in 1931 and she lived through the depression. There were seven children, no income. Her father was a, an artist, an unsuccessful artist. Um, and her mother tried to make ends meet for the family, but there still were the seven children. She had to divide her time between looking after them because my grandfather was just busy narcissistically painting paintings. Um, <laughs> so growing up with this accumulation was already a very heavy weight. And, um, and because my grandfather was an artist, my, uh, my mother ended up, when, when he passed away and then my grandmother threw everything aside and went to Nepal. So she obviously wanted to, to start a whole new chapter of her life. And she learned how to paint. She never became a good painter, but it was clear that all of her life's ambitions and desires had been squelched for all the years that she was married to my grandfather. And so this was her big opportunity when he died um, to become a person in her own right. Um, so when she went to Nepal, my mother, said she would you know look after this huge accumulation of things that my grandparents had and that's sort of how the whole disease started um and but you know but they're real drawings i mean by a real artist he wasn't he wasn't a successful artist but he was a very very good artist and so um anyway the i think my happiest memory as a child was was when a, a sort of old farmhouse that my parents had rented. It was a very dilapidated and just filled to the brim with my grandfather's, well, with all kinds of things, boxes of letters and papers and, and also drawings by my grandfather. Um, we had to go there every weekend when I was a child and sort, which I, I don't know what the sorting was because nothing ever got organized, but we had to spend the whole weekend there and I never could go to the beach which was just a few steps away from the house I grew up in or play with my friends or do anything. I always had to go to this farmhouse and sort. Um, and it was very hot and they never opened the windows. And I know it was a nightmare. And then one morning um, I woke up to find my mother in tears and the building, which was all old and dilapidated had burned down in the night. And um, cause it was, it was in another, it wasn't in our town. It was a little ways out, sort of in the countryside. Um, she'd rented it because it was so cheap. So they don't even know how who set fire to it. But the, but I remember. I mean, this is now. I feel guilty too. <laughs> now we're flooding out all our ghosts. I never heard this story. This is revealing I, a lot. I remember <laughs> trying to be very, you know, supportive and sympathetic with my mother. But inwardly, I was rejoicing, and I thought, thank God, like finally, I can have a life and I can be a real child like all my friends at school and. I can go to the beach and I can read books and I can play and I can be a person. I don't have to carry my dead grandfather around with me all the time. <laughs> and sort. <laughs> yeah. And sort. Um, but now it's, I mean, it's, it's so far beyond that exponentially, it's indescribable. And, um, and now, as I said in the check-in, I'm carrying this huge weight that, that, I, I don't I hope I process it soon because every night I have these, you know, as I said, that my nights are filled with this relentless processing of all kinds of memories and all kinds of people, even people that were relatively tangential to my childhood are now 
getting you know minor roles in my film my dream films um so i i always think of martin luther the ein feste burg and i unfortunately i can't i didn't because i learned it in english as a child i don't remember the original words but in the third verse of the hymn um in the english version it's let goods and kindred go this mortal life also the body they may kill god's truth abideth still his kingdom is forever and that popped into my head out of i don't know where um when my mother died last year and it's been like a mantra it it just it just every time i i start feeling stressed out it comes into my head without me thinking about it it just is there and um i'm really grateful for it but i'm also thinking you know with beatrice her her way of of dealing with the past is um is to visit these precious objects and look at them and have the memories and like even this tools for living um i don't know what's going to happen with that but my my desire is to move on to live in the moment well she, now i understand why there's so many times that my mother has joked should we just burn the house down <laughs> i never knew there was a real story behind it but she says that all the time <laughs> Yeah, and all all my life, my um, yeah, my my dream. I, I have to say, my dream was always that the house would be burning down, and I would just have enough time to grab my violin and run out the door. And and I still feel that way. I if the whole, you know, if it all could just vanish in a puff of smoke, and I as long as I have my violin. Well, I don't even play the violin now. Now I've really become minimal. All I need is my tormented brain. <laughs> And my growing soul. Um, anyway, I think we and are. Your tap shoes. And my tap. Oh yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. My tap shoes. Absolutely. I'm. I'm wondering because you mentioned, and and Beatrice as well several times now dreams, and, and, the main topic is stuff. Why do we collect so much stuff? Why can't we? throw it out and one of my recurring nightmares is that i have so much stuff and it doesn't fit into my luggage and i have to leave in a hurry uh, and that is a really a recurring dream through all my life of course i have um we have traveled a lot but um yeah well the stuff could be there but just forget it what about that <laughs> Just, just uh, don't give it any importance. And uh, I also have some old dishes from my mother, and I use them every day. Beautiful uh, soup bowls, and, and and I use it. I use it, uh, and I rem And when I when I use it, I think of how much she cherished it. And so this is kind of a connection. But when I would have to leave the house in a hurry, I wouldn't take them with me, of course. Get I out. I was just imagining you you carrying the soup bowl. <laughs> I have from my mother um, Chinese teacups, which are very porcelain. You can look through mm. that. And I don't you, even dare to, uh, to, to, to touch them. Or if you knew how I, I use, I, I use her normal dishes, you know, but they have all little bumps there and there and there. When I, when I use the Chinese things, they would be broken. But I really think, isn't there anybody who wants this stuff? Because, you know, it seems to me that's the other question. So many things seem to you so important and so valuable. Also my, you know, my silver um, forks and knives, which I got for my uh, birthday since I was five years old or something, you know, and I'm using that now because I realized that I cannot even sell them. Nobody will give me any money, you know. It was very expensive to buy them for the people who gave them to me, but now it's no worth. So I use it. But the Chinese cups, they would be broken in 10 days. So 
really? Do I, well, my mother was so proud of them and very rarely with very high guests, you know, she used them. And we always had to pay so much attention or she washed them herself. And why do we give so much value to certain things and to other things, none? I had to, um, in our, many of our friends are in the same situation. They have Augarten, maybe you remember that it's very expensive dishes and cups in Augarten. And we have all these crystal glass goblets. We never use, hardly use them because you have to be very careful when you wash them. Now they just sit in the, and um, our children don't want them either because it's so impractical to use them. You have to throw it into the dishwasher and that's it. So why do we need all this stuff? Why do I need so many books on my shelves? Which I don't, well, now and then I read one, but here and here and in this room and in my bedroom, yeah, they, they remind me of how I became what I am, but nevertheless, nobody will read them after me, I guess. I don't know. I think books is better. I try now too to get away some books because I heard that there are now these book exchange places where you can bring books and people can pick them up without paying. So books have some value. The things, the books in your computer, probably not. And the, the plates mm, and the silver things, mm, I don't know. But books, I think it's the only thing which will find somebody else. <laughs> But also maybe not, you know, where things are shifting to audio books and digital books. And I mean, I love real books still, but even, even that, you know, there's so much, so many things that we think will have a legacy for generations. And then, I mean, this is also something we, we found when we were in the, my grandma's garage, we found about six TVs, all, you know, like, like the first the first, like, one of them is like the first TV of all time. And then the other ones, you know, <laughs> to kind of gradually go ahead of that. But none of them are functional. None of them are useful for anything. It's totally obsolete. You know, rec well, the record players, I guess that's coming back into fashion. But um, yeah, it's also interesting how sometimes we think something, I mean, even on the computer, I think that things will have a legacy. But who knows? I mean, even from when I was middle in middle school to now, the, the leaps and bounds in technology and what is relevant and what is not relevant and what works and what doesn't work is huge. So this idea of, of you know, lasting legacy is actually all an illusion anyway. The computer has a, an advantage because there it's no stuff. You don't have to carry the stuff around. It's just in your computer and your disk. And this is sort of thrown away quickly, you know, so <laughs> don't care. I just want to read a poem to you. And I, this poem has been coming with me for more than 10 years, maybe 20 even. It's by David Robert Brooks. Remembrance. When I'm gone, Please remember me as a heartfelt love, a tenderness. Hold fast to the image of me when my soul was on fire. The light of love shining through my eyes. Remember me when I was singing and seemed to know my way. Remember me when we were together and time stood still. Remember most not what I did or who I was. Oh, please remember me for what I always desire to be, a smile on the face of God. And this is it so beautifully for me. I know it's not easy. My mom, <clears throat> um, when she moved the first time from the countryside to the city, she gave her um, kiss that was made from the most expensive in Boya wood uh, to my daughter as well as her first um, sewing machine which she bought with her first salary. That was, part, that was during the drought and the depression. So it meant a lot to her. And 
she was that was the only real she was always looking after her things very carefully because of growing up at that time going through the war and everything but these two items i know was very precious to her because of the, her own um what the value that she put to it was was the first thing she could buy for herself in such a time and i always said to my daughter if you if you want to keep it don't keep it because you have to keep it because you want to you will because you really want it because you must remember her life was hers and it's not yours and it meant a lot to her it doesn't mean it's going to mean a lot to you it doesn't mean you disregard it and you don't treasure it and just make sure you don't carry whatever came with it so that you can distinct it as an object versus the memories of the individual who it belonged to. Because that's two different things. Otherwise, then it becomes heavy. We carry it. And I myself know it as well. I've done it many, many times. We carry it in our, especially women, we carry it in our bodies. And I truly don't believe we are created to live a life like that on somebody else's life again. And it doesn't mean we don't love them. And that's why I love this poem so much. Because it's whatever it might have been, even though my mom might have struggled a lot, went through lots of things, and the life that she wanted for herself maybe didn't materialize for whatever reason. But I'd rather remember that the smile on her face than the physical things. And it's purely because of me. I can't project it onto anybody else because I don't put value so much to things than to, I'd rather be with you girls, for example, than having lots of stuff. So it's a personal thing. There's no right and wrong in it either. And when we go through these memories to remember whose memory is it? Yeah, thank you. I was just thinking of, um, when I was uh, interested in gemstones, so I've, it's some 20 years ago or so, when I started to, to really work with them and find what, they're, they're, what they can do. And one of my teachers said um, that it's very, it's not good to um, pass on jewelry or at least you have to clean it very carefully because the the stones and they they especially the stones they carry that memory or the bad feelings or whatever uh, those persons had and he he said that um in former times when the the british came to india and saw all those rubies and whatever in the temples they stole it and then they made jewelry out of it, but um, it didn't go well. So many people got sick and, and they said for centuries, people come to those uh, temples and give all their, their grief and all their bad things to, and, and pray to the gods to, to help them. And, and that these, these stones just, took it all. So I, I thought uh, that was very interesting to, to think of this. And, and when you say the, the energy that goes with it or the memories that go with the stuff, to, to, to watch out and to, to really say, what do I want <laughs> and not let me live that again. And, and we were thinking, my husband is a photographer, <laughs> as you can see. And um, he, he said, what do I want to pass on? I mean, he, he got better with time. So does he want to, to whom, whom do we want to punish? <laughs> Sometimes he says, <laughs> to give that legacy. Yeah. So he has millions of, of um, dear um, yeah, negatives and whatever. Today is in the computer, but the, the old stuff that's still there. 
<laughs> in the cloud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I've been wondering if this is just a shadow, a heritage of the war that we have been told, don't throw anything away, you might use it again. You might need it again. Yeah. And maybe it's right. We don't know what times will come. Maybe we need it again. You don't know. If we get into a total breakdown, we might need it. If not, we don't need it. So who knows? Now I wanted to, to talk to another thing. So the, the memory of a person and what the person cherished not to be take over as a load and a burden. So I remember to have learned that uh, honoring what your ancestors do, did or were or whatever, that would be important. And honoring was, for instance, to take care for whatever they cherish. So how do we reconcile that? Because if you don't do that, you can also throw away the stuff. So where is the middle way to, you know, to honor the person's memory and what they hold held dearly and just get rid of the stuff as stuff? I don't know, but it's really difficult. And even your own stuff, you know, do I throw away my diaries now? Probably nobody ever will be interested because I don't even have children, but throwing it away, how many hours we were writing this stuff, you know? <laughs> so I, I just don't know. Well, it depends why you wrote. And I sometimes wonder if this, because you, I write with my hand, and I sometimes wonder if this uh, thread, it's a thread through my life. So it's a kind of therapy, right? It can also be a kind of therapy, definitely. And it's part of your experience. Yeah. So it's part of you already. Um, it's, yeah, it's here. <laughs> it's part of us. I think we also have to leave. Um, yeah, I think we, 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 we continue this conversation because I think it's important to figure out what, what's of real value in life and mm -hmm. what, what sort of a legacy do we want to have and uh, do, do we take over from the others and feel and do pro prolong it. And as you have to go and Victoria has to go, so we, we postpone it to the next time. Okay, shall we do Good. that? Mm -hmm. So thank you, and without check out. Do we, yeah, a very short one word for okay. Okay. what you, your takeaway for today. I'm grateful to be uh, together with you and have talked about it. You, Han? For me too, and to just feel it together with all of us, us all feeling it together as a whole. Yeah, I wouldn't talk about it with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like this, definitely not. Mm -hmm. no. I'm I'm grateful for that poem, and also you said you know her life was hers, not yours, and I think that's something I'm going to think about a lot as I continue to do this excavating <laughs> that we have to do right now. But what you know, what things do I want to do? Thank you. Yeah, and I'm grateful, and uh, it's good to talk to people that have the same bug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so see you in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.